Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Good Deeds Note Investing Podcast. I am your co-host, Jamie Bateman, flying solo as a host today. And we have, today we have a special guest, Kelly Burke, who joins us. Uh, Kelly is, uh, has 20 years in the title insurance industry. She's run her own title company uh, over the years and, and now works for Reese Title. And so we're going to kind of pick her brain about title insurance. Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Today's Friday. So um, looks like it's a nice weather there where you are. (laughs) Um, So Kelly, if you don't mind, can you tell our audience a little bit about your background? Sure. So um, after school, I somehow managed to get a job working in a law firm and um, It was a couple years ago, right? It was a, it was, it was just a minute ago. <laughs> a couple um, decades. <laughs> yes, but that I started working for you know like two of the partners, and uh, long story short, uh, after a couple of years there, they decided to go out and start their own law firm and their own title company, and they were, they said, Kelly, like, why don't you come with us? And I said, well, I don't really know anything about title, and they said, Well, what do you think you've been doing when you're looking at an Alta survey or you're you're looking at the title commitments that come across our task, like that's all title. And I said, oh, all right, well, maybe this will be a good idea. So I started working with them back in 2001, went through all the pre-licensing tests that I needed to, um, started and you know, there's a whole, there's a lot of moving parts in the title, the title Mm -hmm. business. So, you know, I kind of started doing post-closing, which was like kind of dispersing the files, running through the escrow accounts, and I was doing like the front end processing where I was preparing the settlement statements and uh, reviewing the title and putting the title commitments together and then actually doing the closing. So being the person sitting at the table saying, sign here, sign here. Mm-hmm. And then eventually over time, I ended up managing the title company. And then a few more years go, go by, I assumed ownership of it. And a few more years after that, I sold it back in 2013. So, yes. yeah, you've had a lot of, a lot of experience. I can tell you, I, you know, I, as you know, worked for a title company for a couple of years after college. And it was so apparent that they don't teach us anything about this in school. No, know? they, no, definitely <laughs> had, not. Definitely not. No idea. You know, and I, I worked at a, for a title company as a, as a, a settlement officer as well, doing mostly refis. Right. And then I worked in the funding department, you know, and not that this episode is about me, but I, it just was so clear that I didn't know anything at all about title insurance. And um, so I think a lot of our listeners may be, you know, they may generally know what title insurance is, but they may not completely understand, you know, what, what the purpose of it is. Do, do I really need as a note investor or a real estate investor, do I really need title insurance? You know, what, um, what does it actually insure and how is it different than other types of insurance? Um, do you mind just touching on oh, I can what title you. insurance is? No, I mean, title insurance is, it's, you know, along the lines of like car insurance, but it's sort of, you know, it protects you that's going back in time, right? So mm-hmm. title insurance protects purchasers or lenders from losses that mm-hmm. arise after a real estate settlement, okay? But re- they result from unknown liens, encumbrances, or other defects on the property that existed prior to set up, set up, settlement, right? Okay, yeah. So put simply, title insurance is a way to protect yourself from financial loss and related legal expense in the event of a defect in title. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So yeah. basically if you're, if you're buying a note or buying an investment property, mm-hmm. making sure that your, your position is protected, that you, yes, yes. you know, right. that the, the, the note is actually backed up by the collateral, which is the property that the assignment chain is all intact and that, um, that you actually own this property, that there's not some tax lien that's, you know, yes. going right. to take the property from you or, you know, right. um, okay. That's, so, why, you know, that's when you get into like the different types of policies, right? Okay. Right? You've got like your owner's policy and your lender's policy. So yeah. for your note investors, I'm sure you're. Yeah, it's more lender, lender focused. So yeah. briefly, what is the difference between those two? Well, so an owner's policy is, 
is just that. It's just it's mm-hmm. issued just to protect the owner. Owner of the right? property, right? The owner yeah. of the property, right? Um, you know, and it's purchase at closing, so it's a one time clo- one time fee, mm-hmm. and it's valid for as long as you own the property, right? So the owner's policy protects the the buyer or the owner mm-hmm. should a title problem arise, right? Mm-hmm. And the loan policy is just that it's protection for the lender. So mm-hmm. most lenders require a loan policy when they issue issue you a loan. And the policy is typically based on the dollar amount of your loan, and it only protects the lender's interest in the property. So, you okay. know, the, I think the most important part of a lender's policy is what they're doing is they're insuring their loan position. So gotcha. being like, <clears throat> we are in first loan position. So, you know, if something were to go wrong, they would have the ability to foreclose. There's nothing else standing in their way, right? You right. know, liens, judgments, bankruptcies, anything like that. Yeah. So they're just okay. lender's policy is just that it's just to protect the lender. So one thing that gets a little murky for note investors is because we'll buy notes that may have transferred hands two, three, four, ten times. Yes. I know you mentioned that title insurance looks backward. Yes. Um, and we're not talking about transfer of the property here, just to just to get in the weeds a little bit. We're transferring right. the 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 owner of the loan, right? right. So the the lender is which is common in the, the lending space, you know, even mm-hmm. in the institutional space, you'll, many people are familiar with having a mortgage and then, oh, now, now I'm, last month I was paying my mortgage to this company. Now I'm paying it to a new company. So right. does this, does that title insurance transfer to the new, the new lender or? Yes, it uh, does. The lender's title insurance. Yes. Yes. It, okay. It does. It's because, you know, when you draft a loan policy, it says, you know, it's, it's successors and assigns. Right. Um, okay. And sometimes, you know, in land records, you'll find the assignments are actually recorded. So, you know, if it's going yeah. from, say, you know, Wells Fargo to Citizens Bank, right? right? Sometimes you can sure. track it that way. Um, so but, it's good. I'm sorry, go okay, ahead. Another, another way is like when you actually record the deed of trust, when the lender actually records their mortgage or deed of trust in land mm-hmm. records, it has a, um, a MERS reference on it, like a mortgage mortgage electronic reporting system, I believe that's mm-hmm. for. So that that yeah. way you can kind of track who is actually servicing the loan. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So, but so the title insurance policy transfers, but it only goes up to that date that it was through. Like it's only so if something arose after that date of the closing on the property, that could still be an issue, but the policy that was in place at the time of the closing is transfers to the new lender. <clears throat> That's right. So uh, like, like example, if you had a state tax lien against the consumer after mm-hmm. the policy date. Yeah. And obviously that title insurance is not, not going to cover that. No, right. Only prior to, I mean, got it. That's a whole other, a whole other story that is because there's several different types of, well, there's two different types of owners policies but we don't need to, okay. those, right? So on the lender side, when you're buying a note, I mean, this is a question a lot of newer and even more experienced note investors have sure. is because we'll buy notes. A lot of these are non-performing where there's lots of issues with them. These are not super clean cut, you know? Right. Um, so, and none of this is legal or investment advice, obviously um, sure. from either one of us, but um what type of, when you get into the different types of searches, right? So I'm not typically buying my, when I buy a note, I have bought notes where I've gotten title insurance, but it's rare. So um, normally speaking, a note investor will go under contract to buy a note or more than one note, and then they'll start their due diligence phase, right? And so a huge piece of that due diligence is running a title search and confirming what we just talked about. Sure. So what did, can you just briefly touch on what type of searches there are like one owner, two owner? Yeah, I mean, I um, can tell you, um, you know, typically if say you're doing a, a, a standard refinance, we would do a one to two owner search. Um, mm-hmm. Usually that's called like a limited search. Mm-hmm. So if you're, you're like going back to, you know, the last mortgage, um, mm-hmm. you know, when there was a, a you know, a purchase, that was like yeah. not a family, pur- not a family purchase or whatnot. Right. So typically, that's what we do for a refinance. Now, if we're doing a uh, a purchase, you know, we're actually transferring ownership. 
So we do a 60 year search, you know, and that actually kind of depends though on the, on the jurisdiction of which we're in. So our mm -hmm. underwriters and different jurisdictions have, um, have different, <clears throat> different requirements. Mm -hmm. For instance, like Baltimore city, you have to go back at least a hundred years just to find any recorded easements and such like that. Okay. But typically I would think for note investors, they're probably just going back right. to that original, original mortgage. Right. That makes sense. So, and you said before we hit record that you're the company you work for is, is a national company. So you work yeah. across all States in the U S we do. Um, like Pretty much. 35 of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a lot of them. No. Cause it's one of the things that especially newer note investors probably underestimate. I know I did, you know, initially as far as the, you know, foreclosure laws and everything is so state dependent. It is. Um, and, and, and it's actually it, county like, yeah, you know, even, but even county by county can vary yeah. a lot. Very much. Um, so are there particular states that you all stay away from or that you're, you're focused on from a business standpoint or how does that no, work? I mean, if it, if it makes sense for us to be there, we yeah. are there, there are, mm -hmm. um, there are a few States that are just too, too difficult to be in. Um, is that from a licensing standpoint or? Yeah, it, it yeah. is like, um, just, you have to have a title plant and it's just there. It's, this is too expensive, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, Baltimore city is probably one of the most difficult places <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's so, like in our backyard, but right. Yeah, it's so very, Maryland very is, so Baltimore city is, is very different than yeah. Baltimore County or yes. Yes. Okay. It really is. <laughs> and that's from, can you touch on that? Like, why is that? You know, I just think that it's just, they have a very, a very old system. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, they're yeah. not, they're not online, you know, so a lot of the, a lot of the jurisdictions across the country, we can e-record, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, Baltimore city cannot. So that has gotcha. been not been very helpful during COVID with the, the courthouses being closed. Yeah. I mean, we are like six months behind. So in getting a, in getting a deed on record and, and it, it becomes so complicated because you know, when you purchase something in Baltimore city, you have to have a lien certificate mm -hmm. and that only yeah. lasts for like, you know, 45 days. So <laughs> it has all your taxes and, and water. And, you know, if there's any environmental fines and, and things. So, sure. you know, if they're taking six months to look at it, the lien right. cert is then expired and you sort of have to start all over again. So, and I know they also had, cause you know, you and I are both in Maryland. I, I yes. know that Baltimore city suffered uh, was it about a year ago that oh, yes, I forgot cyber hack that. as well? Yeah, that seems to be a lot of that going on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that was fun. That that didn't help much either. But uh, yeah, so and so you touch on e-recording. Now we use Simply File if we can. Do you do you all use Simply File or what do you, what do you actually use for e-recording? That is correct. Okay. Anywhere that we anywhere that we can, nice. which is really which is really quite, it's very efficient. Oh yeah, definitely. And then sure. some, you know, some counties and some States will allow for e notary as well. So there's, ah, yes. you know, there's a lot, there's so many nuances to the, to the note space and real estate. It's there like is. digital signatures is one thing e notary, you know, where it's, I'm getting notarized through zoom or some other, right. <laughs> other video. Uh, well, you have, they're called um, Ron closings, right? Remote online notarization. Okay. Gotcha. And then, but you, that may be, you may go do that as a note buyer, but then, then you find out that the county or recorder's office isn't going to accept that for recording, you know, <laughs> there's, so a then, of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of rules. There are some yeah. things that you can't, you, that you cannot e-record mm -hmm. right? and obviously some things that you can. So it's not right. completely uniform yet. And the right. Ron closings are not a hundred percent there yet either, at least not for us, even though that we, we, we can do them. Mm -hmm. it's just that you have to, you have to choose a platform, right? And then there's certain lenders that are on that platform, okay. but there's a couple of different platforms. So you have to choose like which platform you're going to go on because those will, the, 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 those will be the only lenders that you're allowed to work with the okay. other lenders that are on the platform. Does that make sense? Interesting. Yeah. I didn't so, know. So, you know, that's why we're, 
we're getting there. Yeah. We're, you know, like I think Virginia was the first state to say Ron closings are, you know, they've been doing them for a while. Okay. Um, but something that's definitely on our radar to be like when they're, when they're really here and, and ready to go, we'll be ready to go with You're ready them. to go. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things. I mean, it's, it's can be frustrating, you know, as far as the lack of uniformity, I guess, across the country. Um, <laughs> right. But at the same time, to be honest, it, it also creates opportunity for investors um, because it's not like the stock market where it's the price is what it is. You know, right. you can find deals and that, that inefficiency in real estate and note investing. And you may hear some, uh, some noise in my background. We have a little construction going on. But um, that's one of the things that also creates opportunity too for investors is that inefficiency. So, you know, I would encourage people not to always look at that as all bad. Um, but um, so now, okay, we touched on Baltimore City and some of the, because of COVID and um, some of the changes, you know, basically delays that were, that are still happening. Well, Have yeah. you seen that across the country? I guess, what Absolutely. changes are you seeing in the title industry in general? Well, I mean, just like going back to the, to the delays, I mean, the when um, Texas had that major ice storm, mm -hmm. like we're, yeah. we're still behind from that because you know FedEx wasn't working, so it delayed right. us like weeks to get you know to get if somebody settles in in in, te in Texas, say right, they couldn't get the package back to us, so it was hard for us right. to enforce it. So that that was really fun too. That's why yeah. these Ron closings, when they're really ready to go, will mm -hmm. make everything much more efficient. Okay. Right. right now we're still dealing with live paper. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> hopefully it's come a long way since <laughs> I think it's come a little way, at least since I worked in the title industry, but, uh, yeah. but I mean, that's, uh, yeah, it's like, I mean, I do think COVID in some ways, the pandemic has really kind of helped push us along, you know, where we should have been already in certain, well. certain aspects of just running, you know, running a business and that kind of thing. Um, so speaking of running a business, do you yes. mind touching on, cause you ran your own business I did. So, for quite some time. And so as a note investor, just pivoting the conversation here a little sure. bit away from the specifics of title and title mm -hmm. searches and title insurance. Um, do you have any, any kind of takeaways as you look back, you said, was it 2013 that you sold no, I business? sold it, but I, so I started working for the company back in 2002, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, and I s assumed ownership in the best year ever, 2008. Oh, right. Yeah. Right? The, the mortgage meltdown and the real yeah, estate it crash. Was, right. And I literally had a newborn, I had a, a four-year-old and a newborn. Um, but it seemed like a really good idea <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and it actually worked out well because, you know, we did a residential business and a commercial business. So okay. as I've noticed, like throughout the years, at least through my career, mm -hmm. you know, when, when one area is doing great, another yeah. one isn't, but as long as you, if you kind of diversify, yeah. you know, like I'm yeah, saying, it makes sense. Like you've got residential refinances, you have residential purchases, you have commercial refinances, commercial purchases. Right. Anyway, what it was really great for me because when I grew up, as I say, in title, I learned residential and commercial at the same time. So they're not any, there's, it's not any different for me, right? The, cause the, the, the concept of it is the same, right? It's really, it's really just a couple more zeros, which can be intimidating. Right. Sometimes. Right. But back in 2008, we had a really great project um, that I had a, with a developer. They were doing, they were the master developer for Rowan University. So okay. it was all student housing. And it lasted for a very long time. Oh, okay. You know, so I, again, I feel kind of bad. Every, it was a struggle for a lot of people during that time, but yeah, you know, we were, we it's, were it's doing yeah. okay. No, so, and Chris and Chris and I have talked on the podcast before about, you know, you don't want to make light of people's struggles or anything like that, but there's, but you've got to be on the lookout for opportunity. And, yes. you know, the fact is market conditions change, laws change. Yes. Um, you have to kind of have your systems in place and, and your priorities in place 
um, mm -hmm. so that you can then pivot and, uh, but you were able to do that because you were, the business was diversified. Very much so. Right? Um, and I've, I would say I've kept that throughout uh -huh. you know, my almost 20 years of being in title. Gotcha. You know? And so like, I think that having been, like, being an employee and then being an owner and then really kind of touching every, every aspect of title, like I said, you know, like post-closing, mm -hmm. pre-closing to, you know, yeah, it's just, it's second nature to me. Right. Right. So, you know, running my own business, it was, it was fun. I enjoyed it, but you know, I was ready to, I wanted to, to grow. Um, and honestly, you know, I was, a, I had young children. I didn't want to, you know, in, invest into actually going national. It was just, it was just too, too much. much. Yeah. I mean, honestly, no, I think that's, I mean, it's a lot, something that you know, maybe even we don't talk about it enough on the podcast is just the day to day. Yeah. You know, we have some um, note investors and real estate investors who may have a few performing notes or a, a couple rental properties, and it's more of a side project. But then we have people who really treat this like a business. Yeah. And just figuring out how to scale if you want to scale, whether that's right. outsourcing everything or whether that's hiring in house, but then balancing the family life. I mean, that's very real, you know? It is. Um, so do you have any takeaways for our listeners as far as kind of just lessons learned or anything looking back as oh. far as running your own business? How many, how many employees did you have by the way? Uh, five. Okay. And they were amazing. Wonderful. Like, okay. so, so when I sold, you know, two of them went with me and it was, it was, it was great. Um, but like, really I was nothing without them. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they were, they were kind of the heart of it all. And we were all very, very close, but, um, that is so important in the title industry is being with people that you trust, right? Mm -hmm. You have a lot of money that flows through <laughs> your escrow account on a right. daily basis, right? No, that's a really good point. Yeah. And you're, and, and I guess too, if looking back, I mean, I was always, always, always on, I'm always looking at the bank accounts. You know, there's so many operational pieces that go into running the business, yeah. not to mention the underwriting of the files, right? Mm -hmm. There's no room for error. You cannot make a mistake. Right. No, I mean, <laughs> people are not happy when you, <laughs> when no. you, you mess with their money. <laughs> they're, of course not. Their, their money, their, their investments, they're like where they live, you know? Right. Like, right. It's not all just investment properties. It's <laughs> oh. owner occupied, you know, the residents. Right. Yes. Um, so, interesting. yeah. So it, it sounds like it was, you enjoyed it. It was also and a struggle at times, I'm sure. Of course. I don't um, think anybody running a business would say it's easy all the time, right? Yeah. But well, I feel I, like that that part gets overlooked these days. It's like super cool to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And, right. you know, I, I enjoy being an entrepreneur, but it's it definitely is not easy. And I that's what, you know, on our yeah. on our show here, we try to keep it real and right. um, not make it all, you know, rainbows and butterflies. And, um, it's, it's not always easy. I think it's generally worth it to try to go out on your own and not have that regret. Yeah. I have zero regrets. I mean, you know, the funniest thing is, is that when, when I was assuming ownership, I mean, mm -hmm. it was actually from the, you know, one of the partners that started the, the title company all those mm -hmm. years ago, who told me I knew title, remember that? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but the funniest thing of what I was scared of in starting a business, are you ready? Yeah. Was running QuickBooks. Oh, really? What is that? I wasn't afraid <laughs> of, of the, of getting the business and paying the bills and, and, you know, making the money and being responsible for my staff. Yeah. I was just like, I had never used QuickBooks, you know, like <laughs> it can be, it can be a little bit intimidating. I, I, we use a, a bookkeeper, um, you know, so it's quite helpful in that regard. She's really good. Right. Um, Debbie Mullins, but um, yeah, but it's funny how, yeah, you have these fears and it's almost like you probably should have been afraid of something else. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, how about maybe a title claim or if you like, <laughs> you know, if, if, or, um, you know, you, you sent out the wrong amount of a wire, but those things didn't scare me. But then once I kind of got into it, I was like, what, this is, this, this isn't is that 
no, this is, this is easy. Right. <laughs> this is easy. Um, yeah, but it was, don't get me wrong too. It was a lot, it was a lot of fun, yeah. but once my, my girls got a little older, like I said, I was ready to, to grow and expand. And I knew that I needed a bigger, I needed a bigger team and mm -hmm. I needed something that was bigger than what, than what I, than the platform that I had. Yeah. So then that's what, how I ended up finding where I am right now. Yeah. So just briefly talk about the transition or the time between 2013 and now, if you would. Yeah. I mean, I have, um, I've been working at Reese. Um, our CEO is Mo Kazin. Um, he has built exactly the business that I envisioned in my head. Right. So we have, um, two companies. We have Reese, which stands for real estate settlements and escrow. And we have mm -hmm. NRT, which is national reverse title. Okay. So obviously NRT just does only reverse mortgages and Reese okay. has refinance and commercial and okay. purchase business. So diversified, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, we're on a, we are, like I said, licensed mm -hmm. um, nationally. So when things are kind of slow, maybe here in, in Maryland, well, they're doing pretty good in Florida, you know? So, so how does that work on the, on the license? So you can get licensed nationally, but then not, not because you mentioned 35 states. So I, mean, I should know I handle all of our, <laughs> all of our licenses. So does that mean you're licensed in those states? You just choose not to operate in those 15 states or how does that work? Well, there's some like, um, I don't know if it's North Dakota or North Dakota, like you can't be an outside you have to actually have like brick and mortar oh yeah. right sure you actually have to be in that state yes. in order to do business so there are a couple of states like that that's why we're not there got um, it or maybe okay. some of like the really like a, a midwest state that it probably doesn't make sense to right mm -hmm. so because you have to have a title license and you have to be appointed with your underwriter and different e and o insurance and surety bonds and all of that there's a yeah. lot, that, there's a lot of expense that goes into it. Yeah. Really. I mean, <laughs> and monitoring sounds... it. Right. So you have all these states and your secretary of state filings and your individual audits or some states that like Indiana, we have a partial audit happening right now, you know, so it's just a lot to keep up with from the operation side as well. All I trying to make sure that your clients are happy, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> keeping that part of the business is going but that's the thing that i would say that mo has done really quite beautifully is um assigning the right team members to the mm -hmm. right clients right so it's a very seamless flow okay right no Overall. i think that's really important in running a, any kind of business is getting yeah, the, right, you know, the right people in the right yeah, spots. It's, it's everything really. You're, you know, again, like I said earlier, you're really nothing without your team. Right. So right. everybody has to like do their part. And I, I feel like everybody, you know, I've, I've been around long enough. I've seen <laughs> some things. I know that, I mean, this is a really great place to be. If so would you ever, uh, um, I know you're, you don't necessarily deal in the note investing space yourself, but right. I mean, some, you do hear, you know, people say out there in real estate investing and just in, you know, in general that title insurance is a scam or <laughs> title yeah. insurance is not necessary. You know, it, it's a, what would you say to that? Well, I would um, say that's really great, but why wouldn't you just like pay a one-time fee to protect your interests? Mm -hmm. Really? I, yeah. <laughs> right. I understand how some people could think it's a, a scam because they think, well, why would you ever need it? Well, if you had an undisclosed error or a forgery in the title or, you know, yeah, I could keep going. Right. But if you just pay your one time fee, you never have to worry about it because you're covered. Right. 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 So do yeah. you have any crazy, like, anything from the memory bank as far as uh crazy stories or anything i mean i can i can that you're allowed to talk about <laughs> right <laughs> no no i mean it's it's a very high liability business mm -hmm. you know you have also have to think about wire fraud 
That's, right? that's okay. Yeah. That's huge. It's absolutely yeah. huge. So you have to have systems in place to prevent that from happening. So there's just so many extra steps. So, you know, lots of times what, what happens is uh, there's a realtor and they have their email uh, uh, hacked. And right. so the hacker emails the title company, a new set of wire instructions and said, oh, right. and they have been monitoring the realtor's email. So they know that the closing's happening today, May 15th at noon. So they send out the wire, a new wire thing that is completely unrelated mm -hmm. you know, and it's going into their bank account. So <laughs> I've seen that happen, not at Reese, uh -huh. um, but it did happen. And the processor sent money to the hacker. So, wow. yeah, I mean, and once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. It was noticed like so quickly, they were able to call the, the FBI and actually okay. get the money back, which is rare and doesn't normally happen. So that's really scary today. Yeah. So, about. so any tips for investors there or just, you know, just make sure you confirm the. Yeah, that's what we do a hundred percent. So, so we send out the wire instructions to whoever sending us money. Mm -hmm. And then we ask that they call us to verify mm -hmm. right, to make sure that nothing happened in between, you know? Sure. So if we're sending out, if you're refinancing and you're cashing out and I'm right. you're cashing out a hundred thousand dollars. You give me your wire instructions and you sign a form. You're like, this is all good. I'm right. still going to call you and say, right. you need, let me just verify this with you. Right. Yeah. I right. know my bank is pretty, pretty anal about that to be honest yes. and, and yes. for good reason you know yeah. i can i can sit here and send the wire right now but um from my from my desk but they they just um they they really do i mean it's not perfect but they right. do kind of like you know it, you feel <laughs> they do put you on this i mean they do try to try their best to confirm that those are legitimate wire instructions and that and that i have confirmed them where you know yes. if i'm sending the wire and people get really cranky about it because they're they say, "Well, I I already gave you my wire instructions." And I'm like, "Do you like not watch just, the news right. and see what happens There's in the world right now?" Hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake here right now, right? right. And like once it's gone, like I said, like it's it's gone. It's gone. You yeah. can't. The likelihood of you getting it back, with that one exception of that other title company, they got they got lucky. But mm -hmm. other than that, I mean, people lose a lot of money, which yeah. is really scary. I mean cyber fraud is the whole thing is scary sure like we actually have to carry like a cyber bond as well okay <laughs> so we're serious so it's a uh, okay cyber insurance or cyber yeah, cyber, cyber insurance cyber. yes 100 percent. that's wild so anything else you want to hit on kelly as far as uh you know title insurance or title searches or running a business or uh you know I'm excited, excited, excited for like what the, the future has to bring when it comes to, to title insurance, you know, um, there's, you don't hear too many people say that, or I don't, <laughs> <laughs> well, title is a very, very, very old dinosaur industry, right? Yeah. Um, you know, where people have been doing the same things the same way for years and years and years. Um, which is, that's why it's kind of fun working, working at Reese with Mo is because he's very innovative, right? Always looking for being a couple steps ahead. Um, so you all, you mentioned Simply File. What other systems do you use? Oh, we have an amazing software. It's called Qualia. So it's integrated with the client. Okay. So, you know, you can upload documents securely. You can kind of see what's going on with the file. Okay. That, you know, I think a lot of people probably do that mm -hmm. at this point. Um, but for me, I think I'm excited to see what blockchain has to do. Okay. Have you, yeah. Have you, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I've heard, I mean, obviously crypto is all the rage right now and, sure. you know, yeah. uh, but I have also read and heard a little bit about how blockchain could it kind could. of help with closings. Sure. Um, you have any insight into that? Yeah, I mean, so you know, basically the blockchain is like a decentralized digital database where like no single person or group has control. So once the data is entered into the blockchain, it's updated in real time and any like historical data cannot, it can't be deleted or modified, right? So realistically, we could start now recording everything into blockchain right? But it would be really hard 
to go way back in time and get sure. all of that. Right. So everyone's like, oh, well, well, when blockchain comes, like, what are we, what would happen to title companies? Well, title companies are not going anywhere anytime <laughs> soon. Right. Because once, once the, the research in, is put onto blockchain, mm -hmm. then the title companies are still going to need to verify like the, any conflicts with deeds, court records, divorce filings, bankruptcies, things like that. Mm -hmm. However, if they can get that all together, it would eventually speed up the whole process. Okay. So anyway. it just could be a little more efficient and yeah. potentially make um be you might have more accurate searches and exactly kind of like i say like going back into into all the jurisdictions such as you know baltimore city or whatever mm -hmm. right it, it, it may make things a little more efficient for sure yeah anyway okay. i mean i that's think that's cool. like it's going to be a couple of years before any of that happens yeah and the like um you know i don't think it's too we're too far away either from those remote online notarizations becoming a standard More, practice yeah, yeah. but there's, I, in my opinion there's just still a couple of kinks that obviously we need to to work out moving forward so title agents and title in insurance companies aren't going away just no. like uh, i don't think realtors are going away either uh, as much as no. you know people say no. they are <laughs> <laughs> but we need them right yeah. i mean we need all all aspects of of this the real estate and, and title is such such an important part and people I feel like overlook it, you know? Um, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> taxes and insurance just in general, I, you right. know, it's, it's not thrilling on the surface to think about yeah. either one of those, but they're so important, you know, it, as far as yeah. for real estate investors or note investors, it's like, you know, it just staying on top of that for, for your assets, it, it's critical. Cause like you said, it's a very high, liability Absolutely. industry and that's why like working with somebody that that you know and, and trust right is very important because again it's it's your money it's your right. livelihood right absolutely taking yeah, care of like your money that you use to take care of your family like you wouldn't you wouldn't want to just say oh i'm just going to use you know joe schmo's title company because yeah. whatever you know Absolutely. So, that's that Okay. Well, Kelly, this has been awesome. I really thank you for taking the time. I know you, you got plenty of uh, things you're juggling in your world. Um, so all good. Anything for you, Mr. Bateman. <laughs> so Kelly and I may have gone to high school together. They um, have. May have, but um, so, yeah, I mean, is there anything else you want to throw in before we head out? No, I don't, I don't think so. But if any okay. of your listeners ever have any questions or. Yeah. Where can people know, reach out to or, you? Yeah. Or they want to, you know, run something past me or, you know, need some help. I'm a hundred percent available. Okay. You have any, you want to throw out any contact information? Sure, or anything? Sure, sure. So um, you could always email me at kburke at reesetitle.com. K-B-U-R-K-E at R-E-S-E-T-I-T-L-E.com. Or you could call me, text me, 410-302-2268. Bold. Put your number out there. You know, that's right. <laughs> well, we should all help each other, right? And Absolutely. like again, when title and title isn't something that everyone thinks about. So if you have yeah. questions or concerns, I'm always here to answer answer them. No, like I said early on, it's not something that we learn about in school. Not not no. that not that I would have really been super interested in it anyway. I mean, I understand that. <laughs> I mean, my, my, uh, you know, my, my mom was a school teacher for many years. She retired a few years ago, but you know, I, I do kind of rip on the public school system in general, sometimes as far as per not, not teaching personal finance, not teaching, right. you know, mortgage related things, things that are really important, but my mom right. will come back and say, well, every time we try, the kids aren't interested in any of that. And I'm like, Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's probably true, <laughs> but it's, I teach it's, my kids all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. And it's, but I mean, again, title insurance and title work, it's something that's, it may seem like a niche. It is a niche industry where you have, you know, expert yeah. knowledge compared to most people, but it's, um, it's pretty important. So it was years of practice though, too. <laughs> right. It's not just uh, reading a book and then 
you're a guru. Yeah. So <laughs> we're very true. But you can okay. always ask my daughters, Grace and Summer, about title insurance, and they they uh, probably know a lot more. Okay, than they probably people. know more than most of us do. So <laughs> they've grew up with it. But <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, Kelly, thanks a lot. This has been great. I really appreciate it. And to all the listeners out there, please don't hesitate to give us a a review and uh, on all your listening stations. And please go out and do some good deeds. Take care, everyone.